All right, what is up, you guys? It's the Sandman back at it again. Tool Army, what is up? Here we go. This one is a special song, of course. One of the earliest songs, or bit, I think one of their first singles they've ever put out, actually called "Sober." Um, this is a live video. I remember I actually reacted to the. I didn't know this, but it was a demo version of the song on the channel, and a couple people were like, "This is not even the per the proper version to react to," so I scrapped it off the channel. Um, but since then I haven't even heard the track, so I do remember vaguely, I remember like the two chord pattern and progression there. Um, but I don't really remember much of like the other content instrumentally, lyrically or anything like that. But, um, let's hear this performance live, man. Let's go. 1993. Oh, I remember this bass. Vader looks ready to pounce. Something about he's like in a trance almost. Um, the way he's postured makes me think like a lot of his uh, vocal delivery is like delivered from like you know his abdominal region for some for you know I feel like that's where like the source of like his vocal like his the little belts he does and the manipulations he does I think he's really very physical like a lot of physiological elements come into play right when he channels his voice so which is also why he's got maybe such a unique way of like toning up and down and like um just this just he's got this unique delivery in his voice he goes soft and then he like con contracts like maybe the certain muscles and that he has within him and it, it kind of expels a little bit you know, it's, it's a, I think it all ties into play with just his vocal identity. You know, that, if I had to make a guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, that guitar, the... It's such a droning, like haunting uh, pattern, right? And of course, the choppy thumping bass, the... And, you know, nothing can be said. I mean, you don't even have to mention Danny Carey because he's just the absolute monster behind the drum set um yeah Jesus won't you I think they they changed up the lyrics a bit from the original but Mother Mary won't you whis whisper whistle that part I'll always remember from the first time as well that part really struck me because the religious undertones here make it just pretty eerie right um and some of the, the stuff he says waiting like a stalking butler who upon the finger rests it's like you know, addiction is like follow. It's like following you, servicing you when you need it. But at the end of the day, it's stalking you, right? It's it's imposing itself upon you. Um, 
Yeah. I like it. I like this a lot. Let's go. The way he channels that end of verse to chorus is absolutely insane. I and that whole verse, I am just a worthless liar. I'm just an imbecile. That this part, I will find a sensor in you. I will chew it up and leave. That is dark. That is eerie stuff right there. That is ins- that that is a brilliant like the parasitism of addiction, right? And the next part ties right in. I'll work to elevate you just enough to bring you down. Because the song, the backstory is like it's about a friend that they knew who's like writes all this stuff and like channels his like creative energy right through just alcohol, whatever, you know, substance abuse. Um, But it becomes a crutch essentially. And then it really, it can drag you down. Um... And I think that was just the source of inspiration for the song. I think there's they bring in other elements into play lyrically as well, like the religious element. Um, and yeah, just this other like sinister aspect of this. It's just super, super dark. And I, I mean, just the way Maynard is like, just so physically, it's this, phys- this way he's physically present in the performance is just so unique. It's such, I don't know how to describe it. It's just very unique, right? It's like a trance-like state that he's that he seems to be in. Um, and, I mean, the drum fills are absolutely out of this world. So very intense stuff, very hypnotic stuff. Um, yeah. And I, I like how he just tones down and it's, he turns soft. Like, his voice can turn soft at certain parts. I think let's just play through that part again. Let's go.
goddamn night. That was exhilarating. That was insane. Um, I love like I also like the guitars in the song too. The droning, just the droning, and I definitely mentioned this a lot in that original reaction that I took down. Um, again, just this haunting atmosphere. It's like you're in this dark room, right? In this like red room, and this like literally the shadow that he talks about in the beginning of the song. It's just like keeps following you. Just keep trying to walk away, and you see the light, but it just. It keeps following you, so it's always dark in front of you. Like, like it's it's insane. Like you're just trying to get to the light, but you're always in that darkness of like this addiction, this crutch that you've developed, this parasite that resides inside of you. And I love just seeing this live because I totally feel like Maynard just em lived and breathed, lived and breathed this song on stage right there. I mean, it is crazy. It is insane. The look, like he, this, the outfit, the hair. I mean, this is ninety three. I mean, it is. I've seen pictures of like his stage, pre, his stage look later on with like the makeup and everything. And it's like, wow, this dude hat must be some kind of really in interesting character as well as very intel. I feel like there's a lot of intelligence behind just like all of these guys. You know, the way they, just the way they write stuff, but also lyrically as well. Some of the stuff they write about is just very. Um, it's just very high level lyricism you know what i mean um and the s topics that they explore and and put on paper as well so really really sick performance here uh, i want to play that second verse to chorus again because i think that's probably my favorite part of this whole performance so let's go Please. Oh man, just the guitar in itself sounds like just wailing, somebody wailing for help. Look at that. The way he manipulates his breath. I I will only complicate you. The way he says that, the way he just delivers that, it's like it just goes quiet. It's like ghost notes. It's like some of the stuff he doesn't even say, but like you 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 hear it in your head, and then his voice just pops in out for like a split second, and then fades out again, just all in just one word. Wow, look at that way he channels that. It's like this perfect beat of melody and this slight, slight distortion and harshness in that delivery. Something but no and listen to the guitar in the back just fading, just droning. And the bass keeps chugging though. Yeah, I mean, what their tools really. I find amazing is the way they let the guitars kind of fade, like just drone a lot of times, and the bass just keeps being percussive and uh, keeps hitting, 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 hitting within uh, during the song. So, um, 
Yeah, what a performance here. This is awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Very uh, captivating. Um, just seems like an enigmatic character, man. Maynard. Just, um, cool. I wonder if this is the original lineup as well. I got to look into more because I feel like there's this name that came up when I was looking at the background of the song, like D. Amor or something like that. Paul Damore, and I don't know if he's still a member. Adam Jones, Justin Chancellor, I know are two, I think, are the, are the four members now. Of course, Maynard and Danny Carey, too. Um, so, yeah, I got to look into it. But anyways, heck of a performance right here, man. It's the Sandman checking out. Peace.